Jesus. Thanks, mate. Feels like it's got some weight. It's a hill. Oh, oh you bugger. I thought that was going to be a big old tent. That is a big tent. Size 12 popped up maggot. Right, I wasn't going to fish this week as it's uh, the week of uh, the May bank holiday and uh, I was expecting the place to be heaving but uh, the carp are spawning so all the carp boys have, uh, have done the right thing, they've pulled off and they're giving them a break. Hang on, I'll be back. Right. That was a bit of a nightmare. That fish weeded me up and uh, I ended up losing it. So uh, it's given me cause to have a bit of a rethink about what I do when I do these little diary sessions. Anyway, um, I wasn't planning on coming down this week. It's uh, the May bank holiday week and I was expecting the place to be heaving with the carp boys. But uh, the carp have been spawning, so uh, the carp anglers have, uh, have left them alone, given them some peace. And uh, it's just me and, and one other tench angler on here at the moment. Um, it's been my second night down here uh, in this session. I've had a few sevens, sixes, uh, a nice amount around six pound, and, uh, and some smaller fish. Uh, I've lost a couple as well, including that one just there. But what I have managed on uh, a little popped up three maggots is this lump at ten pound two now uh, it has started raining obviously as you can see and uh, it looks like it's set in so uh, I didn't want to keep her in the sack anymore she is beginning to fill up with a little bit of spawn so uh, I thought we'd uh, We'll get her shown to you and, and let her back in as quickly as we can. So uh, let's let her swim away right now. I'll take you with me. Off you go. And there she goes. There's two rigs that I primarily use for my tench fishing. So uh, let's show you the one that uh, has been catching the most fish on uh, on this particular session um, and is is often particularly good early season when you're catching the tench on small baits it's a um, it's a variation of uh, a popped up maggot on a helicopter rig I'm sure most of you would have seen something very similar um, but this is my take on it so first um, in some fluorocarbon, I'm using uh, an 11 pound carbon, but uh, somewhere around eight to, eight to 12 pounds. I like the fluorocarbon because we're gonna be using a very short hook link, um, and this one's nice and stiff. We can actually use the inherent curve that you get uh, from the memory of the spool um, to set up very much like you would on a, uh, on a chod rig. Um, so whichever way the fish comes in, although we're not gonna have a swivel effect down below, it will help uh, uh, create that hook hold and uh, obviously where we're going to be tying it with a, a, uh, a knotless knot it's going to be creating a very aggressive angle to help that hook in as well right now we've got that uh, hair loop on the fluoro we're now going to get some uh, some rig foam and uh, we're going to cut off a bit about the same length of a maggot going to put that onto um, onto the hair now 
you'll see that uh, you've obviously got a flat end and I've got an end with a, a slight angle to it. In fact, we're going to increase that angle. I'm going to put the baiting needle down through the middle of the foam. Obviously be careful that uh, you don't stab yourself on the way out. These braid um, needles are a lot blunter on the end so they're a bit safer and it does kind of uh, push through and then pop out. So we thread that onto the hair. And obviously the, um, the rig foam, we're not able to push a boilie stop down into it as, uh, as I would do normally with, uh, with a boilie. So we're going to use a very slim boilie stop so it doesn't stand out. And equally then the tench shouldn't fill the, um, the boilie stop and cause it to eject it as if it was a stone or a bit of twig or the like. So we've got, uh, got the, the rig foam mounted on, uh, on a length of fluoro and I'm going to cut off ourselves about, uh, probably about 8 inches to make it easy to work with. Now I'm using uh, size 10 hooks, it's very weedy out there, um, if weed isn't such an issue where you are then uh, you can use a size 12 uh, with three maggots uh, or if you're finding down even further you can use a size 14 with two but uh, predominantly I'd use a size 10 or a size 12 with, uh, with three maggots. So we're going to mount this as we would with uh, any normal knotless knot uh, hook. So we're going back th through the back of the hook. Now we're actually going to tie this hair much shorter than you ordinarily would. And see I've got that, that canter there. We're um, two things. By having it up against the, um, the hook like this, uh, one, it enables it to get nice and flush to the hook so it doesn't stick out. But also obviously the top end of it is that bit more buoyant so it helps hold the hook at the right angle to be very aggressive in, uh, in hooking the tench. So we're going to leave just enough room to do a four or five turn knotless knot. Um, with my knotless knots I always like to take the first turn away from the joint of the hook so um, you're minimising the risk of any abrasion and then uh, further potential problems. can be a little tricky on these small hooks when uh, you've got eyes as old as mine. You just want to manipulate that so that we're using the natural curve of the fluoro so it, it essentially extends the shank of that hook and if you see it wants to hold the hook pointing down like this. Um, the finished hook is only going to, or the finished hook link is only going to be uh, two maybe three inches long so we want to tie uh, a little loop in the end I'll just do that with a figure of eight knots. Always uh, wet your knot before cinching them down to prevent any friction weakening the line.
and then cut off your tag end. And uh, let's see if we can show you this. There we have a nice short hook link with, uh, with the foam in place. We'll then show you putting it uh, onto the helicopter rig and uh, what the finished rig looks like. So I've caught quite a few fish on this hook link now, um, seven or eight or so. So we're going to change it over to the hook link that we, um, we tied up earlier and uh, we can show you the complete rig. So snip that off. I'm fishing a very simple rig, it's a, a Drennan oval feeder um, with a, a helicopter bead um, and uh, a swivel running on that. Uh, so the loop that we tied in the bottom of our hook link, we're going to simply thread that through the, the swivel. And then we're going to feed the hook and that foam through that loop. Um, and the tricky bit here, just make sure that we get the knot in that little tag end through the loop as well so that it all cinches down nice and neat. So this is what the completed rig looks like. Um, obviously at the end we've got our feeder, in this case it's uh, an oval feeder. Um, that's connected to the main line via a quick link level so we can, uh, ostensibly that's really uh, so that we can travel um, when we break down the rods without having the, the feeder attached to the rod. But uh, obviously if you need to change the feeder during the course of a session that helps there as well. Um, there's a, a protector sleeve over that, um, that protects the knot if this were to come down during the fight. Uh, we have the adjustable sleeve here which we can slide up and down. I like to have it just a, a centimetre or two above the top of the boom. Um, I think just that little bit of movement in the in the line does help uh, with the anti-eject properties. Um, I think if I was using a lead or I was using a, a feeder system where the, the weight was a much closer to the um, to the link then perhaps I would have that down uh, closer to the, the sleeve to take advantage of that weight. Um, Obviously during the fight this can slide down or it can slide up the line, particularly if it's run through weed. So uh, after each fish, aside from obviously checking your uh, your hook and the hook link, um, make sure that we put the, uh, the, the helicopter back into the, uh, the appropriate position. Right, let's go and have a look what she looks like in the water. Here I've dropped the feeder into the margins and you can see just exactly how aggressively that, that hook is sitting. Now most of the tench are hooked in the bottom corner of their mouths. So they're picking the bait up, they're really only having to move an inch or two, and that hook is grabbing a hold. Now that line that you can see coiling is simply because I've dropped it in the margins on a slack line. At this point the feeder's been out for about 15 minutes or so. You can see the tape around the bottom of the feeder and the theory there is I'm trying to encourage as many of the freebie maggots to come out toward the hook bait as possible. Not bad. It's probably around seven pounds. Bad one. Probably around the seven and a half pound, eight pound mark. Let's go and have a look. There's that uh, popped up maggot rig. Right, let's let this one go. For that. Right, 
So um, that was the last night, and I'm I'm doing the off now. But uh, I did manage one more fish last night. When, oh, we had this enormous bream. So all in all, not a bad session. About um. I don't know, 15, 20 tench, 10 pound two, blocks between seven, about six and seven and a half, um, an eight pounder, and, uh, and this big old chunky ring, and uh, a couple of eels as well. So let's get this one back. Well, I thought that was the, uh, the last one of the day, but as I'm packing up, rods rattled away and we've actually finished with a uh, eight and a half pound tench. Let's go back. 